Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 257. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Starstream. Hello, Norman. Hello, Star. How are you doing? Good, good. So, happy April Fools. Yeah, happy April Fool. So, do you get any April Fools yet? Honestly, just the one, and that's the NVIDIA G Assist. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only legit one that really shook me. Like, oh, this is a product that I might want. But hey, isn't that all the stuff? Like, ah, oh, you got me there, Nvidia. Oh, you. <laughs> uh, what about you? Me? Well, one thing was the cheat engine. It says it was already, it was free, but on today they just say that oh, for like well, for one month you need to pay two hundred dollars. Like for like. <laughs> Two months, you need to pay a thousand eight hundred just to unlock the features, and then they say, "Oh, because it's like I mean, it's severely limiting. So unless you pay, then you get to use it." I was like, "What?" <laughs> <sighs> then again, I'm still waiting on the Razer one because last time I last way way back then, I think was it 2013, I got wait Razer got a cheating engine. <laughs> no, uh, the April Fool joke. Oh, okay. What was the April Fool joke? Yeah, because. Way, way back then, they called the, what you call it? The Naga Epic, the mouse, the, the uh-huh. MMO mouse. You can use it to do a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much like a sucker into it. I was like, oh, for That's f- not a word! Sake. <laughs> uh, and that's why you bought that mouse. I see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a patch update, man. It's a patch update. Soon, soon. Yes, yes. <laughs> You do know, right? You could just keep buying the numbers to Skype phone call thingy. So when you press the numbers, right, it'll do phone call. Yeah. Kind of. Well, it, oh, sure, that's a good idea. Yeah, like the uh, Naga has nine buttons, right? Uh, twelve. The Epic one has twelve. The, unless uh, you're getting the Hex, which is only six buttons. I'm just seeing the side of the mouse. Like They have numerical numbers from one to nine, right? So you can use that as numbers and whatnot. Like, eh. Yeah, basically the top row numbers. Yeah. Top row but why are we even entertaining this? This is just a joke. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, let's get back on track. Um, in today's Pony News, uh, you like cookies? I like cookies. Hey, cookies. <laughs> yep. So it seems that uh, a company called Sweet Prince has... Well, they're focusing on 3D printing cookie cutters. Highly detailed pony cookie cutters. And, well, they look good. Like, the way that they're um, doing it is looking good. And I, I don't know what to say, but it is interesting. And if I bake a lot, I don't mind buying this just to make some pony-style cookies. Yeah, but the question arises, do you even dare to eat it? Yeah, why not? I made it, so I'm going to eat it. And uh, the cost for set cutters is $9 American for one. And if you want to get the whole set, it's about $50. And uh, if you want Unicorn Twilight, there's one there too. So you have varieties. And also they have some other things too, like video games, Mario, um, and so on. Like even they have the, uh, they have a Game Boy cookie cutter kind of deal. So that's cool. 10 bucks. Apparently, from the looks of it, it says 3D printing from various fandom. Ah. So that might explain, yeah, so that might explain it. But still, this is one of those cool cookie cutter things. Mm-hmm. Yum. Yeah. So, what goes well with cookies? I don't know, I think, what about books? Uh, I would say milk, but books is good too because you have a good time reading a book and then you want to have some cookies and milk on the side. Yeah, b- books too, but that's strange. <laughs> but anyway, uh, talking about books, The Element of Harmony Volume 2 gets a cover on Amazon. So uh, if you guys haven't heard, the official guide to The Elements of Harmony Volume 1 was kind of a behind the scene of the pony swirl, like in terms of um, storytelling, design, what goes behind the scenes and whatnot. It was a really short, nice book where even the show writers got to write in it and share their thoughts on the show. And Volume 2 is out and that's awesome. 
And in this one, it's a guidebook to season 4 through 6. And it explains a lot about almost everything from that season, which is cool. Because I think the first book covers from 1 to 3. Star, are you a big fan of the pony books? Pony books? Mm, I don't really collect it. Because I might worry about the fact that if I collect it and then... I mean, I read it once and then I'm just going to leave it to the side and not going to read it. Uh, Alright. But would you buy this book? I'm nearly going to buy it, but yeah, I, normally I think I would recommend buying this book if you are you want to know behind the scenes on the show. Uh, alright, alright. Then, yeah, if I have the chance, I will buy this one because it is a really good book. And since I have the first one, why not, right? So, yay, this is a definite buy for me. This is a definite buy for me. We're going pretty fast, aren't we? We're yeah. already going pretty fast. <laughs> well, it's not much news this week. Yeah, even if there's some, it's like near April Fool's, so it's like, eh, that's going to be annoying. Yeah. Uh, last piece of news is um, concerning about the My Little Pony movie. Remember last week when we talked about that one toy about a big giant pirate bird? Yep. So apparently he has a name and it's not bird though. It's boy, boil. boily, boil, boil. boil? boil. boil. Right, so it's boil. So yeah, Birdo and boil. Hmm. I, I don't know how people can get them mixed up, and I I don't know what to say. Like, I would say let's just wait for it and uh, let's hope for the best. But I really really can't wait to watch this new movie. Like, hmm. And what about you, Star? Honestly, yeah, I can't wait to watch the movie also. And what about Boyle? A- any interest in Boyle? Want to buy the toys? No? No, but somehow it does remind me of someone. Uh, who? The the Britain Got Talent su- uh, Susan Boyle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Because it looks like a big bird or something. <laughs> if it's a male, then okay, that's fine. But if it's a female, then it would give me an impression of Susan Boyle. I don't know. I mean, not not to offend anyone, but it just get, kind of gave me that kind of impression somehow. It's okay. It's okay. So, uh, that's the news for this week, and I think we'll say goodbye. Nah, nah, yeah. terrible bad April Fool's joke didn't work out. <laughs> now we have um we have a few things, and one of those is Star here, and. Star here is a guest host and also my guest for this week. Uh, so Star, if I do understand right, you are a collector of the My Little Pony Bill of Bear Plus, right? Yes, I collect. I and, collect a lot of them here. Yeah. Mm, and you're not in the states where it's easily available, right? Yep, that's right. So, um, just to let people know, you're. In Brunei, which is near the eastern part of Malaysia, which is really far away from, well, Singapore. So, Star, how did you get interested in starting this collection of yours? Oh, it's a long, long time. It's a long story. But all in all, it's just kind of a, uh, I don't know, it's kind of someone found the interest in getting to collecting plush. I mean, it's kind of giving me an impression that, I don't know, I makes me feel like games has... I mean, I'm, I'm a gamer, actually, also at the same time. And then it kind of make me feel like, you know, game has a certain value, but over time, it kind of degrades. And then in the end, it'd be like, oh, you know, the games will no longer have any value unless... I don't know, like, it's not a physical item, that's the thing. And I kind of want uh, some nice physical items that I could, like, I don't know, hold or something, and then... Flash hmm. kind of fit the deal. Oh, okay. So, um, just to uh, clear up some things, video game do have some financial values to it, but the way that the current market is, it's virtually impossible to sell off your Final Fantasy thirteen to get that huge big bucks like how 7 did for the PlayStation 1 era. And I also think this for the Final Fantasy VII because of how the game is easily available. Uh, back in the days, like uh, the Nintendo consoles, like uh, the gold card for the Nintendo 
uh, championship, was it? Ah, yes, the, the for the SNES. Nest, Nest, yes. yeah, the Nest, and those are considered to be really, really rare because of its uh, significant value and also its very it's limited. This, yes, limited run. Yes, but in today's day and age, video games are easily available, and they're not in that limited run kind of deal. But still, um, that's besides the point. So you went for plush because it's a physical item that you can, well, hold. It's physical, so you can hold it there. Yep. So I'm thinking that Pony was not your first foray to plush? No, it's not my first one. What was your first one then? My first one was my one of my uh, bear from Build Bear. Oh. I got it from a random shop, somehow by, by chance that I stumbled across it. So, any significant reason why you bought the bear? Because, I mean, if you found it at a random store, I mean, it has to be a good-looking bear. Uh, why I go for it was because in before I started collecting my build bear, I mean, I kind of have this pretty much as a bit of a wish list, I think. <clears throat> no, it's not kind of wish list. It's kind of like a once, like I kind of want a... I'm not a plush or something. And then I was looking around the internet to look for certain good brands. And then somehow I stumbled across Build Bear. And the first one that I stumbled across was the the rabbit that I like. Then, but of course, at that time, I do not have the means to buy it. Then fast forward to 2012. Then I, but then I found that bear that what makes it significant for me is the fact that when the first impression where I see is that I could tell it's a build bear. And second, oh. because of the the way that he shaped like, I mean, I could mm-hmm. tell, I could tell that he is a luck bear because he's oh. a sham- yeah because it's a three D clover, so it's a shamrock bear. So my first impression of him was like, no, my first name for him because that time I haven't adopt him, so. Uh-huh. When I just seize, seize it, then I just say, oh, you know, your name must be Lucky. <laughs> and then I did, yeah, and then I didn't know what was the name, the species name, because each bear has their own name until mm-hmm. fast forward it. Until I don't know, one or two years ago that I found out, oh, wait, so your species is Lucky for you. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is Lucky. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if, if I do understand right, Bill a Bear, they have their seasonal items like for last year, their Bill Bear for Halloween was, um, I think a vampire pony? Or was it a zombie pony? Uh, sorry, not pony. Um, a zombie bear or a vampire bear? It was a zombie bear. Uh, uh, also the werewolf. Yeah. Oh, werewolf, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Bill Bear do those kind of things. And, um, fast forwarding to ponies, uh, how did you felt when Bill Bear said that they were going to do ponies? By the time when they announced it, I was already a brony because I joined Brony fandom in 2012. So mm-hmm. I kind of have a... So because how I got into ponies, I did mention before, it's I look at them like as if like a walking plush. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so yeah, it's kind of like living, breathing plush. I was like, oh man, oh, I wish I would have it. It's like custom plush is so expensive then. Yeah, like custom plush is not cheap. Like the good ones are. Oof. Yeah. So the next best deal was to get one of the build bear. Then. Yeah, there's many options, but because I've been collecting build bears way before that, so by the time when it announced, I was like, "Oh man!" I was like, "Wow!" Then I got my pinky from uh, eBay at that time. Oh, so you didn't go through build bear then? No, at that time that was the first pony plush. Because at that time, I was always keep going through eBay because mm-hmm. a lot of them, they always pretty much in seasonal, as in like, they tend to get uh, obsolete over the times, mm-hmm. even the normal ones. So I got Pinky. At the time, I, I remember Pinky was still available in, in uh, at the shop, but I didn't think about it much. Then after that, I, was, I got my Pinky. That was the time where I got the crave for getting more pony plushies after I hold the first one, my Pinky. Oh, all right, all right. I've personally seen a few of the Bill Bear plush, and one of the things or one of the features for the plush were 
what you call this, uh, you, you can dress them up any way you want. Um, as for one of the things I remember was Rainbow Dash, and you can put her in her gala dress, was it? Yeah, the gala dress. Yeah, and you can put scented packets inside the plush and also a voice box on there. And like you can do the whole shebang. And is that uh, standard for all Billabay plush or is that is, um, exclusive to um, the ponies? Uh, honestly speaking, they are all what you call add-ons. Mm-hmm. So you, you can just don't need to buy all those stuff like voice box. <laughs> those considered as a, I don't know, it's like seven, eight. US dollar for one. Mm-hmm. Number was the mm-hmm. price. The cents is about five US dollars. So everything you buy because it's like Build Bear is like a plush company and it's also like trying to attract more customers using the add-ons as well, you know, to increase the to make people buy more like add on. So like people pay more for the item. Even the clothing is also the same, the capes of this. Yeah, but the most important is always the bear itself. Hmm. Make sure it's always looking good and whatnot. The quality checks out. All right. So, how many Bill Bear Pony Plush do you have now? So far, I have all of them that that they have released, and plus one extra Twilight. Wing or without wing? I modded to don't have wings. You monster! (laughs) Why don't you have both of them, winged and non-winged? Because they don't release the non-winged one, the unicorn version so then i had to mod it out (laughs) you monster i mean you monster you (laughs) so uh basically you have them all and worth it was it it worth it for you i dare say it's really worth it to me (laughs) because you get to hold especially you get to like hold your favorite character and sleep with them well yes i do sleep in my plush and it's very nice (laughs) That's the design of plush. You hug them and then you go sleep with them. So yeah. that's cool. So I'm guessing like with any other collectors, uh, they do have a value, right? Yep, they all have value. And eBay is famous for scalping at the price. That's so, a- okay, for example, how much is a Pinkie Pie now? A Pinkie Pie? Uh, you can see a range from very cheap, like about, I can't remember what's the price, but my assumption about eight nine US dollar can escalate all the way up to about two hundred dollar. Wow! How come the increase? Uh, I don't know, but all in all, you know, people always like to profit the whole thing. True, true. I mean, not two hundred. I mean, it's about still about fifty to hundred. Yeah, it's still about that, but depends on how if they put accessories and they may escalate up to two hundred. All right, but still, I mean. Um, I, I do understand the increase of price because, well, people spend money, they want to get back some, they want to get back a percentage of how much they spend and whatnot. But have you ever seen something like, for example, um, Trixie was one of the plush that was re-released. So did Trixie's price on the eBay market, um, dropped? I'm not sure, but it depends on how much people like keep noticing the market, but in all honesty, it's still the same. I mean, it's always a range of, it's always a range. Ah, alright, alright. So basically, um, people buy them and, well, it, it just depends on the audience, like, if they're interested or not, and if they want to, uh, well, just want to spend on them or not. So yeah, it, it's normal. And, um, lastly, is there anything that you want to, um, say about say pony plushes and whatnot. Like I, I think I haven't asked you about how was the process for you because you live in Brunei, and if I'm certain there's no Billa Bear over there. So what was the process for you? How how do you get them? My method of getting it is basically through a forwarder. Forwarder. Alright, so I, I've heard of them before. There are people who, well, you buy stuff on a website like from the US and then you send it to that location and they send it back to you, right? Yes, correct. So how's that process? Is it easy? Well, all you know, it's a, it could consider as a double-edged sword. I mean, it's one way to get the item, but mm-hmm. it also depends, but the most difficult thing is always the shipping cost and of course the dimension of the 
the items that is being shipped. That's always a big issue for me. Well, per usual, like with any of us, I remember buying something from the US and the shipping price was ugh, just too much. But still, but still, if you really want it, you, you have to deal with it. Yeah, not to mention there's also, of course, the issue of security and handling. Oh, how, yeah. why so? Thinking about it back, it's giving me a bit of a uh, sad life because I... Because I go through a forwarder using my friend uh, who stays uh-huh. in, who is a US local, so he always helped me ship items. And at that time, it was Christmas, and he kind of owed me a few things, so he kind of sent me a. Uh, I asked him to help me get the hard fund, uh, Flourish uh-huh. and all this. And that time, Build a Bear Flourish was released. And I asked him to ship it out, but the parcel never arrived. It just Till this day. To this day, it's lost. Oh, no tracking, no nothing. Even track, it's very badly done. So it kind of say that it's sent out of US, but in the end, it was like poof. Oh, is there any way to well, kind of get the post office to deal with it? No. Yeah, in the end, we have to resort to a refund, and it takes such a long process. <laughs> refund, and it's not from my side. It's, I have to ask my friend. To help me deal with the the insurance and all this, I was like, oh, I was like, lucky I got insurance. Or else I was like, oh, but it still is like, oh no, it's still one of the most headache thing ever. Yeah, so it's a hit and miss kind of deal. But most of the time, it's always a hit for you. Yeah, most of the time, it's always a hit for me. All right, all right. So, well, would you recommend people doing the same thing? In all honesty, is for those who live in Asia, yes. There is one way I could do because a lot of the shops in the US, they apparently they accept some shop they accept foreign debit credit card. So that mm-hmm. is easy. So you can just use a forwarder to forward the item. Or in another way is you ask someone to help you buy certain items through the website. And you just have to make sure you pay them for either the item and the shipping cost. But all in all, because shipping in the US is always easy because to ship that item to someone uh, or any company who do forwarding, it's always a free shipping or it's True. cases. But the double edge to it is means that you need to pay shipping. And then to reach us, then you have to pay another shipping. So it's like you have wait. to pay shipping twice. Wait, wait, wait. So if I get this right, usually from a store like Bill Bear, you buy it online and ship it to their location. It's a free shipping cost. That's one thing. Yeah. But you need to pay double shipping from Bilibear to X location and X location to your place? Uh, in certain cases, depends on the item, you may need to pay double shipping because uh, Bilibear tends to have a... If you purchase over anything over 50 US dollar, then you can get a free shipping. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Okay. That explains a bit. But if you buy anything from eBay, but it depends on the the seller, then you may have to resort to paying that. Mm, all right. Well, let's just hope that you don't need to. All right, all right. Understandable, understandable. So anyway, thanks, Star, for well sharing your thoughts on uh, your love for the Billy Bear plush. No problem, Norman. Last question. Uh, who's your favorite plush? It's the same as my favorite pony. It's Fluttershy. Yes. It's Fluttershy, Twilight, Luna. <laughs> oh, you. So anyway, um, let's go on to the next topic. And next topic is, well, it's a Patreon sponsored, um, discussion. I usually do this on the discussion show, but said topic is a bit on the, str- I won't say strange, but it's on the site where it's a hit and miss kind of deal. And you know what? Since I got you here, right, Star? And, well, it is your request. So, might as well do it with you. And we can have a proper discussion on said topic. And said topic is about the MLP merchandising. Yes, merchandising in general. In in general? Or pony merchandising in general? Pony merchandising in general. Alright, see, yeah. if you're talking about merchandising in general, then... <laughs> we could take... The whole discussion until next day. <laughs> yep. So anyway, um, pony pony discussion. So why this topic star? In honesty, this is my first re- first time doing a Patreon request. So ah, 
yeah. So it's my first time donating to someone. So I'm thinking of something like easy for discussion. So my first thing, my first thing that came in mind was because all in all the show was like talk about comics a lot, but what about other general items? I mean, well, we did talk about movie toys. But, true, true. But in general, but I'm not sure how much in depth has been covered throughout the show. Well, um, honestly, the show doesn't really go in depth into merchandising that much because um, there's so much interest in it and whatnot. But still, um, this is a discussion show, and I'm glad that you're here with us so we can have a well, have a proper uh, discussion for the topic. For you, you're a guy who likes the Billa Bear plush just because well, you have an interest in plush. But have you ever had an interest in the um, brushables? Would I need to? Because Bill Bear itself is brushable. <laughs> uh, true that, true that. Because uh, when people think of um, MLP toys or merchandising, they always think of the, what do you call this, the pony brushables, you know, the, the one that uh, has always been there from the very beginning. And I, for one, have a few. Well, technically I have three only, Rarity, Fluttershy, and Trixie. And Trixie still in box. Well, I, I won't say that I highly enjoy them, but I just like owning them. And it's one of those things where, hmm, okay, um, this is fun, but I don't think this is for me. And as time goes on, um, other sort of merchandising happen. And one of those things are t-shirts, officially licensed by Hasbro. We love find it's one of the places to get official pony shirts, which are really good looking. And Star, do you have any pony um, shirts and whatnot? Nah, my only pony shirt was the l- last year of Fren- the Friendship Express 2016. That's the only bro- pony shirt that I have. Ah, all right, and that is also an official shirt by Hasbro too, if I remember right. Cool. Is it? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I have it, and yeah, it is. Oh wow! <laughs> so looking through what they have, right? They have a lot of um, stuff like uh, the collectible cards, trading card games, uh, their coloring books, their magazines, their even, what you call this, comic books, and even toys. And uh, there, there's so much to gather here. And well, if we go to the whole spectrum of the pony toys, there's so much to cover. So I'm just going to go for things that I personally am interested in and have bought. And start, do uh, chime in if you have anything to share. Alright. Because um, one of the few things that I personally enjoy buying was the My Little Pony blind bags or those blind bag figures. Those ponies are the right size for me. They're small, um, easily stored, and looks good. Some of them, like if you're talking about the main six, yes, they look good. But as time goes on, you'll have a lot of um, recolor. So sometimes you can have your, um, what you call this, um, Trixie looking like Twilight or Trixie looking like Rarity. And even a Rainbow Dash, sorry, um, a Fluttershy looking like Rainbow Dash because back in the day, they didn't have a mole to create a, an exclusive Fluttershy pony. And, well, that is sad, but there's a reason for that because, well, they don't have the mold to do it. And creating a mold, I'm guessing, is expensive. Yeah, because doing a mold is not easy. There's a lot of uh, R&D involved in doing mold. Yeah, and the cost of making one mold is going to be expensive. So that's why the recoloring. The recoloring is simple. And, well, if they're going for um, one of the figures that are a bundle of three, like, for example, the Rainbow Dash... A tree pack where I think you get Rainbow Dash, Sorin, and Gilda. That is a pack I bought because of Gilda. And as time goes on, you have more like um, the Fluttershy Rarity, Steven Magnet, and the Mentacore. You you have that set too, and those kind of toys I really like because they're easily stored away. And as time goes on, they have a lot more till I gave up on collecting them. <laughs> yeah, because eventually it does take up a lot of space. I mean, they are small, yes, but in long, long-term long collection, yep, it's going to take some space. 
True, true. And also at the same time for me too, it's because of the price. Like in the American dollars is affordable, but when you times that by four, it's going to be really expensive for me. So hence, I don't collect them anymore. But one of the few other toys that has grabbed my interest is the um, Equestrial the Equestrial Minis. Um, said Minis are almost similar to the Japanese toy company. Uh, I think uh, uh, Feel Good Toys was it? Uh, the, it was like I think it was Takara Tomi, is it? Uh, not Takara Tomi. Uh... Android. Yeah, and androids. Androids. Um, androids are made from which company again? Uh, they have a really yes. nice company name. <laughs> they have a lot of company. I think one of them was Good Smile Company. Was it? Yeah, the, it's the Good Smile Company. Them? Yeah, yeah, the Good Smile Company. The Good Smile Company is a really nice company name. <laughs> the Good Smile Company. But anyway, um, they almost look similar to that, but not really because the Good Smile Company is freaking expensive. Because one of their um. What you call this figures can cost you about um I'm I'm just on the Overwatch website here for the Tracer and Android and it costs about fifty dollars. You do have to understand though, um because in any kind of figure in production it's all um it's all not it's not easy actually because it's all about the coloring. It's also about the details. How detailed are they? For the for the pony blind bags especially not not the one in the box sets. Those are actually they just reuse the same mold. They just recolor the figurines. Yeah, true, but still, um, it's one of those cases where uh, Android here has their quality, their, their stamp of approval, and whatnot. Plus, it's hard for me to justify fifty dollars for uh, what you might call this. How many inches of this? Like, I, I'm guessing about three inch height figure I mean there's reasons to it like licensing and what you call this uh, licensing production shipping boxing like there's a, there's a whole lot of things that I do understand why it's at that price but we're customers we don't really care we are in the merchandise if we are willing to pay 50 bucks for said product we'll pay 50 bucks for said product but um, back onto ponies the figure or the Equestrial Mini looks similar to it and the pricing for that one are, I think, about $10 for one, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that's affordable, and they look good. And I've been collecting most of them. Like, right now, I have gotten the... Well, I am almost have all the first set of the um, Equestria Girls Mini, except for Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash. I just need those two to complete the first lineup. And that's all, that's my goal. Right now, I'm collecting a few others like Sunset and um, Adagio Dazzler. And who knows, um, I might even grab some of the other ones that spike my interest, like the Derpy or even Trixie. Who knows? Especially the new ones that they just announced. Yes, the new... Derpy. Yeah, yeah, the Derpy, Trixie, all this, yeah. I, I actually do have a I don't just collect flash. I actually do collect a bit of a the blind bag figurines. Oh, really? No. Yeah, I have I have a few actually. It's on my desk right now. But the thing is, um, in the end, I was, after I collect a few, I was like, you know, I don't feel like it's worth it. Really? Any reason? My reason is because okay. Oh, finally, I got the ones that I want. Open it, put it on my desk. Next thing I know, a few done. months. Yeah, technically it's just done. I was like. Okay, what do I do with them? Uh, so, so, so in the end, it just grow dust, and it's just like ah, uh, you know, he's just be another dust mine again. Oh, great! Oh no, oh no! Uh, but still, but still, um, sometimes collecting some product is fun. Some is fun. I'm not saying that you should um spend all your money on said products, but still, um, it's it's one of those things where it's. It's fun to collect, that's it. It's fun to collect and fun to see, but in terms of usability, that's another issue. Well, unless you take it around to take photos with them, then that's a different story. But if True. you just collect them and just display them, then that's going to be another space. Yeah, but still, um, that's why we're into merchandising, because we want to collect them. 
Yeah, because we just want to see the characters in front of our eyes every day, staring at our soul. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but still, um, when it comes to the Equestra Girl Minis, like I'm, I'm taking a look see at the price here, and the general consensus is is about seven dollars American. Uh, that's recommended retail price. So for seven bucks versus fifty bucks, yeah, it's not bad. I, I don't want to collect the e- Equestria Girl Mini. Like just only one character. Oh, who are you interested in? Who else? Fluttershy. <laughs> Fluttershy. Yeah, yeah. Well, technically, uh, if you're not hunting the original version of Fluttershy, there is a few others. Like, um, I think you got the one where she is rocking out in her, uh, concert outfit. And I think you can get one of her in the, uh, dance off like in the cafeteria song. I I don't think so. I'm well, checking in the pep rally, right? Yeah, no, no, you don't. They don't have that one. I, I'm just looking through here on their website, and uh, I don't see that version. So it's just basically the rock concert. Oh, there is some. Um, here's the other thing that I noticed that uh, if you want the pep rally. Shirt. She has a whole set with her, with tables and accessories. Hmm. Something that I will never buy. Yeah. The, the what they call it? The diorama. Is that? The yeah. Prop? The diorama. And stuff. Oh, the prop. I, I th- the yeah, prop. the props. Yeah. The diorama and the props. Yeah. So there's that too. If you're interested in getting the pony toys, there's a few ways to start off. Like you can start off small. You can start off big. And honestly, it depends on what you really want. As for me, I've set a goal to get the Equestria Girl Minis because they look cute and adorable. Yeah, it's it's all depends on per, people preferences. There's mm-hmm. also Funko figures if you like the more detailed ones. Uh, Funko figures are not detailed. They're freaky. Their eyes, they're dead. <laughs> they're, they're looking to your soul. Mm. But still, um, they do look interesting. Like I. I think I have only one, which is the Derpy. But if you're talking about Funko in general, I do have a few, like the Overwatch, Street Fighter, well, um, I, Zootopia. The ones I kind of referring to was the vinyl one, the vinyl. Oh, those figurines. those one, yes, 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 the vinyl figures. Yeah, the the vinyl figures are good and detailed, big, and I think they're discontinuing it. They're not in sale anymore. Was it? Because I thought. It was, they announced it back, way back then. I mean, during, they say no new. I remember they say no new figures or something. Something like that. And I also remember that, um, Hasbro, sorry, uh, Funko has lost the license for creating more pony figures. Because if you take a look at what Hasbro are doing, they have this series called, um, fan series or fan favorite, something like that. I, I don't really remember. I, uh, let me see what they call it. Uh, fan series, yes. Um, the fan series, it's similar to the Funko figures, but they're more detailed, they're more, they're, they look really cool. And, uh, the figure I'm looking at right now is the My Little Pony Guardians of Harmony fan series sculpture, Queen Chrysalis. This is Queen Chrysalis with two changeling in a really nice, cool pose. And they also have a one with Celestia and Nightmare Moon and also Discord. So this is one of those products that I don't mind having. But the price may vary. Um, if you want a Celestia and Nightmare Moon, they're 19 bucks. And if you want a Discord and Queen Chrysalis, they're about 30 bucks. Hmm. So. As we go on to other merch uh, besides toys, there's also the comic books and books. Um, we mentioned before, there's the Elements of Harney mini books, which is an insight into the world of the ponies from behind the scenes and explaining a few things. There's also storybooks, there's also um, light novels, there's also the soundtrack where you can buy a physical CD or buy it online. I mean, when it comes to merchandising, is basically depends on what you enjoy and what you really want. It's hard for me to say which one is good and which one you should buy. If you're asking me for my recommendation and my opinion, I would say go for something that you really enjoy and want. Personally for me, I enjoy the Equestria Girl Minis, so that's why I've been trying to look for them. 
and the comic books are also another good avenue for merchandising. So yay. So I, I think that's it from me because I feel like I'm repeating myself. So Star, anything else to add? Yeah, all in all, it all depends on the people likes and dislikes. It also can be easily said and done, I think. True, 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 true. Well, I hope you're happy with the discussion or bits of discussion we had there, a star. So for you guys at home, who would like to, well, have something similar to this, uh, you can get it at patreon.com slash the MBS show, where for a dollar you can get a thank you and also all the access to um, the deleted content or stuff on the, well, Patreon. And for five bucks, you can give us a topic of discussion where we will talk about stuff you want to know or stuff you like us to talk about. Uh, for example, like this one, where we talk about merchandising in an upcoming topic where we talk about the main six character development. So if you guys are interested, um, it's all on the Patreons. So uh, before I head off, I would like to thank a few of the Patreon supporters, um, starting off with Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, uh, Nemdragatorius, Starstream, and also Master of Lag. Thank you very much for the support, guys. I do want to add on one thing, though. Oh, okay. Is it seems like we forgot something? Oh, what is it? Did we forgot about the... What have we done for anything interesting oh, for this week? yeah. That, yeah. I forgot about that. I almost forgot about that one. Yeah. Uh, try new flow, you get this. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> and what have been entertaining me for this week? Well, upon a recommendation from a friend, Sapphire Heartsong... She recently reviewed Yuri on Ice. I initially wrote it off as one of those silly animes that I have no interest in. But upon her explanation and upon the setup of the series, uh, it sparked my interest. And I believe I spent the whole day watching Yuri on Ice till finish. And I have to say that was a very entertaining anime. It is highly entertaining that's all I can say uh, would I say go watch it yeah if you have interest in sports anime uh, since figure skating is a kind of a sport so yeah um, I would say try it out if you if you have the time it's only 12 episodes for season 1 and season 2 is said to be released this year in October so yay if you're a big fan um, it's almost coming out and what about you, Star? What has been entertaining you? For me, well, other than catching up on tech news as per usual, um, I've been gaming a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. What have you been playing? I've been playing, uh, well, two big games. One was Tokiden 2, which is a Koei Tecmo take on a Monster Hunter series from Capcom, but with storylines and fighting, what you call it? Japanese uh, create, uh, monsters, the Onis. All right. And then we got Nier Automata, which is a Platinum game, which is developed by Platinum Game and released by Square Enix. Yeah, anything that uh, Platinum touches that has a high budget is good. Yes, but sadly, yeah. they can solve scale bound. Yeah, that is all on Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but in all honesty, I recommend Nier Automata. It's such a good game. Just be prepared to invest like, oh, I don't know, uh, 60, 70 hours into it. Yep, it is an RPG, even if Platinum did touch on it. Yeah, but apparently, it's, from what I heard, it's also a sequel to the first game. Yeah, it's kind of a spiritual sequel to Nier. And you know what? Nier is a very complicated storyline because uh, it has a rich history from another game, which I don't remember. Drakengard, yes. And you know what? I don't know much about it. So why don't you just go on YouTube and do a bit of background history on set game because I'm sure a lot of people are talking about it right about now. Yeah. But I do honestly say one thing though about near series. Mm-hmm. Just 
don't do one playthrough of the game. It's it's a kind of a game that a multiple playthrough is uh, kind of recommended. And also, uh, interestingly speaking, this game doesn't finish in just play through one game. It's a uh, there's for Nier Automata is 26 endings, so <laughs> be prepared uh, to look for all of it, and of course the five main main endings, five main endings, which unlocks after each playthrough. And yeah, if I do remember right, the original Nier had four endings, um, not that much as 25, but if I do remember right, some of the endings involve you getting all of the weapons. <sighs> I'm not, so, yeah. yeah, I'm not too sure if was it four or five endings, I can't remember. I, I remember it's A, B, C, and was it D or E? I can't remember. But on, uh, yeah, all in honesty, such a great game. I do recommend it. Highly right, recommend right. it, yeah. It's released on Steam now and available on all modern consoles. Is there an Xbox version? I don't remember. Or, any, or is it it's on PS4? I'm uh, also not too sure because I also play on the PC version, just that Anyone who's, uh, any listeners who owns the AMD, just be prepared with the bugs. Oh, it has bugs on AMD? Really? Yeah, apparently those who got AMD, they got a white screen bug. Oh, that's Which not is, good. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, and so, I'm double checking, it's only on PlayStation 4 and Windows. Yeah. Still, it's great to see that a lot of the console games that is coming to PC. One game that I'm hoping coming to PC is still Final Fantasy XV. Uh, I don't know about that one, my friend. I don't know about that one. It's rumored because originally it's developed on the PC, then they port it to PS4. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, who knows? One day, one day. One anyway, day. um, I think that's it for us for this week. Probably next week we'll talk more about gaming. Who knows? Uh, we'll probably talk about stuff we've played. Who knows? I haven't touched anything new, so I'm still playing Overwatch in Payday. So, yeah. And tabletop sim. <laughs> yeah, when I have, when we have the time. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the mbsshow@gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and as for me, I am at Norman Sanzo. And Star, where can the good people find you? And you can find me on my DeviantArt at uh, spell it out A N G E L I C O R E double X X dot deviantart dot com. Right. That's where you can find me. And also on my Derpy Boru. But I don't post much on my Derpy Boru. Alright then. Alright then. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube and Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyvalive.com. And also, uh, we have this thing called the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Uh, please do subscribe to that show if you want to hear us blabber about the Ampli comics, TV episodes, movies, and some other random stuff like, well, um, character development, character arc, um, stories from a different show altogether, or different movies like Batman the Killing Joke. That's one that we did. Or video games. The one that I did with Silver Quill was about Destiny. That was interesting to talk about that game. And well, it's all there. Uh, and like I mentioned before, if you want us to talk about a topic that you're interested in us talking about, there's always the Patreon. Five bucks will get you a topic for us to discuss. So yeah. But anywho... Um, I have been Norman Sanzo. And this is Star Stream. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Yeah, signing off. See ya.